And there is the head man, Chris Lamont, his third season as Mississippi State head coach. All he's done is win 110 games in those three years. As we take a look at our batting order, it's brought to you by Capital One. We already talked about Rowdy Jordan and Tanner Allen, Cameron James, Luke Hancock, Logan Tanner, the catcher. Scotty DeBrule, Brad Cumbest, Kellum Clark, and Lane Forsyth, the shortstop, the nine. And this is Griff Gary, and he has been scary good lately, Kyle. How come? Oh, wow, his last start's the best start he's had in his four years on campus. Pay no attention to the numbers. Honestly, they make no mid to upper 90s. Pay attention to that number because that's a number that matters. Because if he's got it in the zone tonight, and that's going to be a key, and he did in the Super Regional Game Three to get him to this point. If he does. He's got a chance to go a long ways to get it is big league stuff the challenge and the issue for McGarry is when he's misfiring and that's happened too often. He's firing away first pitch right down the middle at 88 to get me over and get us started. Rowdy Jordan having an unbelievable tournament hitting over 424 in the postseason. That's down one ball one strike the center fielder for Mississippi State. 29 walks, 38 strikeouts. This is a very difficult team to strike out. That's good fastball there. Last couple of nights we have seen huge strikeout numbers. Jack Leiter last night, Will Bednar, and his buddy Landon Sims the night before. On the ground of the second baseman, Max Cottier. He is up and throws over to his. First base partner Jake Gilloff and there's one down. Yeah, Jake Gilloff at first base. Cotier is at second. Nick Kent is your shortstop tonight. And Jake's the brother Zach Gilloff is over there at third base. Alex Tappan, Chris Newell, Kyle Teal in right field. And Logan Michaels, the story of their first win behind the plate. Here is Tanner Allen, the right fielder. With over 400 in SEC play. Tell me you don't like the way he wears his pants. I love it. Oh, I'm all in. I'm all in. And it's it started a trend. I mean, Roddy Jordan's got him up there. I don't know if we want pitchers to do that, though. We're probably limited to the guys in the offensive lineup. Nick Kent says, my ball, shallow left, two down. Okay, Pete, to have the first two guys make out, knowing they're Jordan Allen for a guy who has struggled with his control but been good lately, this is a big sign oh, for him, good. isn't it? It's giant. I mean, we talked to Brian O'Connor today, and, and his question was, do I send anybody to the bullpen earlier? Just to, to make sure. Because McGarry's season has been so up and down, but man, his last one, his last one was stuff that if he can do that again and that again, wow. They're not going to get a lot of hits against Dallas Baptist seven innings two hits no runs three walks ten punch outs 114 pitches a no hitter into the seventh inning that night Cameron James just looked at a filthy breaking pitch and then you back that up with some cheese and you're behind 0 and 2 95 on the stadium gun here's the other thing draft in a few weeks he's got a chance to make himself a lot of money based on his last start and what he potentially does here in Omaha. On nine pitches, Griff McGarry gets Virginia to the batter's box. Good start for 2 5 and White. We'll see what happens on the other side. Virginia 36 and 25 on the season. Good top half of the first. Here's Mississippi State 46 and 16. We take a look at our batting order. It's brought to you by Capital One. Geloff cut here. Kyle Teal had a big grand slam in the postseason. Devin Ortiz actually started the regional clincher. Yeah, he started on the bump and pitched great. <laughs> this is his second appearance of the year. Nick Kent, Alex Tappan, Jake Geloff, Michaels, and Chris Newell, the center fielder, had a home run robbing catch. As well, reached base in 24 straight games, did Teal, and he is a difference maker. Now on the mound, let's look at Christian McLeod, the big lefty junior. When, when he's right, he can go out and dominate a ball game. For McLeod, look at the strikeout numbers: 113 and 80 and two-thirds innings. Stuff plays up, but he really does need the curveball. 
If the curveball's landing, and you should know early, if the curveball is landing and the fastball's up in the zone, that's when McLeod usually has a pretty good night. He wants to work the fastball up and out of the zone, just like we saw Will Bednar do a few days ago. Now, it's a little different night here, too. As you take a look at Bednar, the sun is not out. The wind is now blowing from right to left. You can see the gray sky, which may make it a little easier for the hitters and may see the strikeout numbers go down. A lot of coaches have been saying how difficult it's been for their hitters to pick the ball up. A couple of them even said, I can't see the ball when it leaves the bat. I don't know how our fielders are doing it. First pitch for a swing. Zach Geloff fouls it into the seats. A 324 average in the NCAA tournament. Hit over 300 in the regular season. Team high 17 doubles. Out of Rehoboth Beach, he and his brother. Sixth set of brothers that have played for Brian O'Connor. Another one of the seats, but only the first two brothers that have overlapped each other. Gives you competitive at bats also. He'll foul off tough pitches. Has a very good idea of the strike zone power from line to line. Go oh, to McLeod bends one and that is foul. <laughs> Out of the bat, we get a baseball first inning to win. Chasing and he does it down at first base. It's Travis Katzenmeyer. May as well go around the infield. Jeff Hendricks is at second base. Billy Van Raphorst is at third base. And Ramon Armendaris is behind the plate. One, two, hammered. That one is skipping down. And Geloff saw one over the heart of the plate and laced a single in the left. Look like he had him set up for that curveball right there after the elevated fastball 2 instead tries to sneak a fastball by him. Zach, even in the Super Regionals, he was battling counts. This one starts off 0-2 and hits a linea for a base hit to get the Cavaliers back with a runner on. They've hit a bunch of home runs late, Virginia. Their offense, though, has not primarily been rooted in the long ball. 49 home runs on the season. Take a look at Mississippi State. They have 70. Cartier's got eight sacrifices. And in at third is Cameron James. And he does square. And he gets it down. That's a good bunt. James will go to first. And then all four infielders that are not involved in the play will head towards third base to keep an eye on Geloff. Good bunt. Not an easy pitch to bunt. I remember Augie Garrido talking about scoring a this is a team, too, that only sack bunted set 36 times coming into this one, Eddie. Listen to the defense. They all communicate. I love that. That's part of the game that we never really talk about how good the communication is in the infield. Right there, we saw State rotate their players, each one being accountable for each other. And here's Kyle Teal out of Malwa, New Jersey at 6-1. 318 average, nine homers, and 351 in the tournament. That breaking ball was hanging. He hits it in the center field. Geloff will step on third. And a couple of singles in the first put the Hoos up one to nothing. Didn't waste any time, did he there, KP? Try to get a curveball for a strike. And Kyle beat him to the punch. Gets jammed a bit helmet. You'll see that often with Kyle in this tournament. Runner at second base. He can smell an RBI. Gets one right there. That'll bring up the designated hitter, Devin Ortiz. Teal stole five bases, and this one has popped up sky high on the infield. James right at the bag. Makes the play. Two down. <laughs> that 
Kyle bring up the shortstop Nick Kent. Two hard hit balls and Kyle it looks like McLeod's curveball is breaking. They just got a chance to hit one. Yeah I mean they jumped on the first one it almost looked like Teal was sitting first pitch break on ball when he went up there and Virginia early has been very aggressive early in the count. First pitch swing there's another one. All five. Yeah, they swung the first that? pitch all five. Yeah. yeah, I'm counting the butt too, right? Might as well. Yeah, counts. For the purposes of the statistic, we should definitely <laughs> make it count. We just did. <laughs> we have counted the bunt as a swing. Five for five. For those scoring at home. He just looked over at third base too to see where the third baseman was. I love that when hitters are just with their eyes trying to bring the defense in a little bit as the pitcher comes set. That's high. Now throw down the first, not in time. It's been a bumpy road for Virginia. They lost to South Carolina in the opener of the Columbia Regional, won the next three, went to the Supers, lost to. Dallas Baptist in game one that was in Columbia. They actually ended the season at Boston College. They haven't been home in a while. Single by Geloff, a sacrifice to second, a solid single by Teal, and it's one nothing with two down, and a two one to Nick Kent. That's three one. Guys, keep an eye on James over there at third. He's playing a tight third base down the line with the left hit with the lefty McLeod on the mound. A lot of ground balls are hit down the line with what he has to offer the hitters. Oh, lost him. Again, each of these teams, one and O, oh, win tonight. You don't play again until Friday. You lose, and you're right back at it two nights from now. And because of the importance of this one, Scott Foxhall, the pitching coach, will make a quick trip here in the first inning to talk to Christian McLeod. McLeod, six foot four. Fastball will get swings and misses. As Kyle said, that breaking ball is the key. You wonder if perhaps they were a little reluctant to throw it after one of them was put in play for a single and an RBI. You know, I think some of this could be, hey, you know, let's just make sure that we understand they've swung at the first pitch every time, right. including a bunt. Uh, but they've swung at the first pitch every time, and, and just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Some fellas, what a difference the clouds make in the first inning for the hitters. Yeah, I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> this is Alex Tappan, he's the left fielder. Look out, that's by the catcher, and no chance to Tanner, and now to third base and to second base go Teal and Kent. Trying to throw first pitch curveball right here, but this is where you just try to throw the daylights out of it and it slips right out of the top of his hand. Nothing Logan Tanner can do. That one goes to the backstop. So first of first hitter of this inning to not swing at the first pitch, but it kind of looked like McLeod was trying to throw that 0 2 hammer breaking ball instead of just dropping one in right there. Now he's got two more in scoring position behind him. Already in the game, big pitch, big at bat. 2 and 0. He got hurt by an early error against Notre Dame, did McLeod. Otherwise, Rona said it was pitching pretty well.
just happened to left field. Back goes Cumbus, and on the track, he will be there to make the play. Mississippi State, McLeod, take a deep breath after that. But Geloff, a single, Teal, an RBI. And Virginia leads it one zip after one here in Omaha, the College World Series. For more coverage of the College World Series and uh, interactive brackets, and that's underselling it. NCAA.com's got a lot of great stories on it as well. Your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Back with Kyle Peterson, Eduardo Perez, Chris Budden on the field. I'm Carl Ravitch, Mississippi State in a 1 0 hole. Luke Hancock, Logan Tanner, and Scotty DeBrule here in the second. As a team, they hit 280, 70 homers, scored 437 runs, over 100 doubles. Only 398 strikeouts in an era of strikeouts. They had 398 of them in 273 walks. They focus so much on this. Chris Lamont has told us every day we practice our two strike approach. Didn't work there as he strikes him out. Hancock, the first K of the night for McGarry. He's got one of those two. Fastball up to 95 so far, then he drops a slider on him. And <laughs> McGarry's got the A step so far already. I mean, it, this is, it is not a surprise when you see the stuff to the first four hitters why he went so deep and was so good a week ago. See the tight spin on yeah. that slider right there. It's as tight as it can get. Good break and good follow through. Four. Up four down, Logan Tanner. 279 on the season, 14 homers, 47 runs batted in. Didn't have a hit in his first game here at Omaha. Three homers, though, in the postseason. We mentioned the roller coaster season that McGarry has had. He started a couple outings and then he was just getting too behind in the counts, allowing too many walks. So they pulled him out of the starting rotation. But Drew Dickerson, the pitching coach, told him, You're not done. We're going to get you back here. So they worked on in some exhibitions. He had some really strong outings in practice. And before the second game of the regional, Dickinson went up to him and said, You're in. And McGarry told me, I like that it wasn't a long conversation. I had the confidence. He had the confidence in me. And it hasn't wavered. Super Bowl. He was pitching in the Super Bowls. So got him ready for this. Wednesday games of guys that generally don't play on the on the weekends. And players would jokingly call it the Super Bowl. But the Super Bowl got him ready. And the stuff looks really good so far. Center field that's going to hold up for Chris Newell. And there are two down. That was an interesting concept. So help explain that to the people at home. You play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then there's the midweek for the guys that aren't generally so guys playing. that aren't getting in the games. I mean, you want to get them innings. You want to get guys at bats for this very reason right here. Because when you get to the end of the season, guys can get hurt. Guys can get tired. Guys may not be as good at the end of the season as they were at the beginning. And, and he was McGarry sharp man. dominating the Super Bowl MVP of the Super Bowl <laughs> right here. Yeah, Tom Brady on the mound. <laughs> and it's impressive. It's impressive what he's been able to do and we've seen it with other teams. We've seen it as well also with Vanderbilt getting oh. two position yeah. players in their lineup. That Boy, Leneve. Yeah. Leneve was the exact Leneve same way. Vaz. Vaz is the exact same way. Guys that. Vaz started five games before they got to Omaha. He started the first two here. Scotty DeBrule is the second baseman. And then he fouls that ball off. He evens the count up at one and one. And the only reason he did not go deeper in the Super Regionals was because of the blister in the thumb and he had cut his finger yeah. on the ring finger. And, and again, it was bleeding profusely from it. It's something that we have to keep an eye on as well. Six miles an hour. And for Griff McGarry, Brian O'Connor loves the power arms he has in the bullpen. He thought Abbott was going to be a stud, and he was in game one. But he said, No one on our staff 
has stuff like Riff McGarry. The ultimate compliment. Oh, four. First walk of the night. And first base runner for the Diamond Dogs is Scotty DeBrule. That'll bring up the left fielder Brad Compass. Cumbus is a two sport star. They call him a mule. He's a football player and now obviously the left fielder. He said I was always stronger and bigger than everybody else, so they called me mule. Well, the mule has a backstop back there in Michaels that has been really impressive during this postseason run for the Cavs walking pitches. Compass to 6'5, 250 pounds. Also, has got a terrific personality. You'll find him a lot of times before games playing catch with kids. As Lamona said, he always shows up in a good mood. Probably in too good of a mood sometimes. Now three and one. All of a sudden, McGarry struggling with a strike zone. But he's pulling everything left side across his body a little bit there, KP, isn't he? Yeah. He, he when he gets into trouble, and Brian O'Connor talked about it, he gets a little too side to side and not as linear. So he's not going enough towards home plate. And that's when you see that tub right there where the fastball pulls glove side. Two out walk, now three and one to Cumbus. That's better. If he stays through the glove, where that chin stays right on the glove and everything follows back behind it. That's when the fastball follows that plane right there. Glove side but down and stays there. That's two in a row. That one works. Two strikeouts and in inning for McGarry and he has the A stuff tonight. Virginia has the early lead. Let's take a look at the numbers. It has been a dominating World Series by pitchers. Bednar 15 punch outs. Abbott double digits. Leiter had 15 and Highfill. Oh. In the end, out pitched Jack Leiter, and Leiter was the people, the guy everyone was talking about, but took him into the eighth and gave up two hits to a Vanderbilt offense that's overshadowed by Rocker and Leiter, but it's a really good offense. Up. I mean, we're not even four full days in, and that, that, those are the those are the appearances that we've had so far. And yeah, Sam Highfield yesterday, the freshman man, he was he was ready for this stage. 2-0, younger brother Jake Geloff. He's not going to get cheated on any of his swings. They're all hard. 250 on the season. Four home runs. A young freshman right here just takes his hats. Another one to the seats and out of play. So Tennessee loses today. Texas stays alive. Arizona ousted as well. So two of the eight have seen their World Series. End. Loser tonight, still alive. And the 2 2 on the way to Jake Geloff. That's high, 3 and 2. Logan Michaels, Chris Newell, 7 8 9, due up for Virginia. In and out of the mid. 
of Logan Tanner. That is such a great feeling as a hitter right there when you foul one off and the catcher cannot keep it in that mid. You say everything right here. You foul tip it. Pray that he does not stick it. Out being recorded. It's a walk, and the leadoff man for the second inning is on base. Walk number two, and here comes Slogan Michaels. Michaels the catcher and the emotional ballast for this team. And his first home run of the season. And he is ready to sacrifice bunt himself. That misses ball one. Earlier, Virginia sack bunted with Max Cotier, and that was the 30th of the year for the Virginia Cavaliers. That's the most in the ACC. Successful sacrifice and down to second base goes Jake Geloff and there you go that brings dad off his feet We should say cheers to a bar up in Wisconsin They are the Michaels family from a small town there dad told me that every time that Logan gets up to bat There's a free round of drinks at that bar. Oh wow LFH yeah. <laughs> That's right. on the road <laughs> You want to do the broadcast from that bar? As well. I mean, let's, let's, let's spread the College World Series as far as we can go. <laughs> well, they capitalized the first time that they got the runner to second with a sacrifice. And here's Chris Newell for the first time. And they're going to do it again. He goes into the gap in left center. This one heads towards the wall where it's cut off by Cumbest. And twice the sacrifice has paid off. Newell first pitch swing, two nothing Virginia. Keep throwing first pitch strikes. This is what Virginia has been doing so far in this game with the runner in scoring position. First swing, first pitch, another breaking pitch at that. Put it right back up the middle. This one a little bit more towards left center. Watch him wait on this. Beautifully done right there. Now he's at second base in scoring position, trading places with Geloff. Hey, the pitchers are a story. The number nine hitters becoming a story here in the World Series. Saw so Gonzalez the other night for Vanderbilt. Now Newell delivers a double. And back to the top of the order for Zach Geloff, who's one for one tonight with a single. Swings at the first one. He misses it at 90. Zach was a two sport star. He played soccer for four years and scored 61 goals. He could have played Division I soccer somewhere. He also kicked for the football team as a freshman in high school. Good pitch, a changeup, called strike. Early, it feels like McLeod is on the ropes. Mississippi State starting to get some activity in their bullpen. One, two. Preston Johnson, the big righty, starting to loosen up, and he'll head to the mound to start throwing. The approach for Virginia tonight's paid off. Get a guy on, move him over, swing at the first pitch. Curveball that didn't break. I'm out. Number two, this inning started. Jake Geloff fouled that ball into the mitt of Tanner. He couldn't hang on to it. And it resulted in a walk and then the sacrifice, a double, and just like that, instead of having an out, you got another run. Zach Geloff, nine homers on the season, 40 runs batted in. That's a fair ball down the line. Scoring 
from second is Newell. And Geloff is two for two with a single and a double. It's three nothing Cavaliers. Really interesting this defensive positioning this inning with runner at second. Look how far he is from the bag. We illustrated earlier in the first inning how close he was on the line, especially with McLeod pitching. A lot of ground balls hit that way. Would have been just a step and a catch, not even a dive. We would have stayed where he was in the first inning. Instead, trading places is a theme of this bottom half of the second inning for Virginia. Zach Geloff was three for four in his first game. He's two for two in this one. Now Cotier. Oh, that's out! That's the ball one. Preston Johnson, who's appeared in 19 games, continues to warm for Mississippi State. The dogs are in trouble here with one out. Saw one up and he said, I'm going to swing at it. He fouled it out of play. So now McLeod pitches from ahead. So the 2015 team that Virginia had on paper wasn't as good as the 14 team that got here, but it won a World Series. That team dealt with all sorts of injuries. This team just had been inconsistent to start, but O'Connor came into the season thinking they were going to be really good. One, two, right back up the middle. And here comes Geloff around third. Jordan's throw cut off. Four nothing. Cotier delivers. And these have been rockets off the bat of Virginia's bats. It's a lot of barrels so far. Chris Lamota's making a walk out that he didn't want to make here in the second inning. How about the approach for the left-handers too? I mean, two hits today for Teal. Newell in the ninth slot took a first pitch break ball to left center for a double. That scored a run. One in the first, now three in the second, and Virginia has chased Christian McLeod just four outs into this. So McLeod is out, and they keep stirring the pot. Preston Johnson will come in 3 0 on the season, and he needs to be a stopper right now because the Hoos are rolling in Omaha. Well, not the out in Christian McLeod won it, not the out in Mississippi State won it, but just close your eyes and listen. That's really all you got to understand about the way that it's gone. That is a lot of barrels so far for Virginia. McLeod faced 11 guys. Four have scored, gave up one, two, three, four, five hits, walked two. And he's been up and down. I mean, when he's been good, he's been able to take them deep, but tonight, Eddie, he was a lot of middle of the plate. And they were jumping. If it was decent early, Virginia was jumping all over. Well, that was the game. That was the game plan from the get-go. Looks like for Virginia, don't let him set you up. He's going to try to get ahead of you. A one, instead, ambush him to the point. And now it's Preston Johnson for his 20th appearance of the season. You see the numbers right there. He's going to have to hold the Cavaliers and give his offense a chance. They got a lot of time in this ball game. You still have a lot of innings and a lot of at bats to get back in it. Kyle Teal will bat now. He had a single and an RBI. And the approach for Virginia tonight swing early, swing often. And those first pitch swings resulted in a bunch of hits. Moves a fastball in there at 90. And no swing from Teal on the first one.
Homer on top of the home plate umpire's helmet. So we're going to sneak a peek at Kyle Teal. And the pitcher Preston Johnson right through it. On the ground and shifted and now making the play to Brule. Not in time. Sliding head first is Teal. And he cannot his head on the foot of Luke Hancock. And he says, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Falling off on that head first slide. I'll tell you, Carl, one thing about Teal, that helmet will rarely stay on. It's either on the swing, it'll rattle there, then it'll come off later. But good range right here. It's just the speed of Teal, the athleticism gets down the line quickly, and by sliding, you avoid a collision midair, but you get one down low. Twice. Oh, right there, you get to see the he knee hit him both the back. He got both. He got the yeah. left knee and the right knee to the cabeza. De Bruyne was playing up the middle and had a range far to his left. He didn't have a play. And now, two men on, one down. For Devin Ortiz, who popped up to the third baseman his first time up. You will notice that every at bat, Teal's helmet comes off. It's just become his thing. I asked him if he's tried a smaller helmet. He said they don't fit. Bigger helmet doesn't fit. He said what it boils down to is my hair is still too silky and smooth. <laughs> and it makes the helmet fall off. Good breaking pitch, one and one. Silky. Got his priority smooth. straight, and I think that's fine. Yeah, he's aware of it too. It's there. I don't blame him. I, yeah. I'll tell you this, fellas. I definitely don't have that kind of. Nope, that it makes two of us. If you have it, leave it. That's a good one. One ball, two strikes. And a four nothing Virginia lead here in the second inning. Already Christian McLeod the starter out. Devin Ortiz eight home runs 34 runs batted in. During the regular season looking for his first hit in Omaha. Johnson out of Crystal Springs, Mississippi, the junior. Six three, two hundred and forty five imposing pounds on the mound. In the outfield. Fairly shallow in center. Routine depth in left, actually a little deep, is Brad Cumbest. Look out! That one got him on the hand, and the bases are going to be loaded with Cavaliers. Oh boy! And this one won't hurt as much. Just a little shake, and the reason why? Watch how he pulls his hand back right there. Just sits right off the top of the hand. A little stinger should be okay. Real dangerous spot now for Mississippi State already down four bases loaded for the five hitter Nick Kent. First pitch hack and he fouls it off. Cordier is at third base. Kyle Teal is at second. Devin Ortiz is at first. Got three runs in already. 
here in the second after scoring one in the first. Mississippi State needs a ground ball double play. Trade to Logan. So far the story early on in this game has been the inability of Mississippi State to get the left handed hitters out for Virginia. Now with the base loaded the righties are going to try to do all the damage here. O2 to Kent. Brian O'Connor picked up milestone win on Sunday and all five of their College World Series appearances have come with him as the head coach. Oh and two that one is held on to. And a strikeout there for Preston Johnson and a big one. Mississippi State just needed an out. No matter how right there Preston Johnson comes in. Hits Ortiz now just lets a fastball go right here throws it right by Kent. There's plenty in this offense to come back. I mean it's going to depend on what Gary continue McGarry continues to look like because he's looked great so far. That. He's an all-time strikeout record for a single season right there. 766 for Mississippi State. Playing in the toughest conference in the country. And Alex Tappen behind 0-1, now 0-2. This will be a big deal for Johnson and the Dodge if they can get out of this with the bases loaded down just four. Johnson lost his footing there, so he'll kind of address the mound. Jake Yeloff, who led this entire inning off, is on deck. Strike three. Johnson does his job. He comes in and he will leave them loaded. Virginia four, Mississippi State nothing heading to the third. Virginia's got four. Mississippi State doesn't have any, but it could have been a lot worse. And this is an offense capable of a crooked number with the drop of a hat. Kellum Clark leads things off, swings at the first one, and fouls it back. Griff McGarry has looked real strong and again his game two super regional start against Dallas Baptist took a no hitter into the seventh inning. One point retired 11 in a row from the third inning through the seventh. Clark Lane Forsyth the shortstop and then back to the top of the order Rowdy Jordan. Pretty simple delivery Kyle from McGarry not a lot of moving parts there well, and what's crazy is when when you talk to scouts and, and Brian O'Connor about the issues delivery was one of the biggest issues is the inability to repeat it. It looks simplified now there's not as many moving parts as I thought we'd see oh. just to go back to a breaking ball right there and that one just didn't quite get there. I, if if this is all that you have seen of McGarry. And you didn't know numbers, you didn't know anything coming in. You just rolled into the ballpark, you went. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna pitch in the big leagues. Right. Yeah. Got lots of these there, curveballs there. Look at 97. Strikeout number three. All right. Watch location of fastball so far. Remember a few nights ago, Mississippi State was on the other side of this. They were watching Will Bednar do this exact same thing. Elevate fastball, stay at the top part of the zone. And McGarry's done that today with the fastball. It has been elevated. He did it again right there to Kellum Clark. Arm side run with an elevated fastball that holds plane. That one's going to work. <laughs> At any level. Forsyth 
Swings at the first one, sends it to right field. Fairly deep, but Teal is there. And then a one pitch out. One thing I noticed right there, Kyle, on your breakdown was he holds his grip, his fingers a little bit more separated than all the other pitchers that we've seen so far in this tournament. The fastball grip, just the just a tad. The, two the fingers two, a little yeah, more separated. If you can do that, it does allow you to stay through the, bas the, the baseball a little bit more to where you're probably not going to get around it or potentially cut it and not mean to. It just gives you a little bit more stability as you're going through. All one. Whatever he's doing, stay with it. It's working. Here's Rowdy Jordan, the center fielder, with two down. It's a change, but it's like a Vulcan change grip. It acts like a split when it gets to home plate. I mean, that was good luck with that. You got to dial up for 95, 96, and then you, you throw me that thing. 6 2, 190, and the fastball at 97. And Jordan stays alive out of Menlo School in Portola Valley, California. Last year he was 3 and 0 with a 135 ERA. He threw 20 innings. He was the team's Friday night starter. That's what they thought of Griff McGarry and now you certainly can see why. As he looks for punch out number 4. Will not get it, but he'll get an easy one right back to him and he hops to flip it to the first baseman. Give me that. Give me give me give me give me give me. Give me, give me that ball back. Trevor Bauer was a success here. He's having great success at the major league level, and we watched him last night. The Dodgers and Padres get a chance to see him again Wednesday night, 10 o'clock Eastern time. You Darvish was crazy. Manny Machado hit a three-run home run last night. We'll see how that series finishes Wednesday night, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, ESPN, and the ESPN app. Third inning and Jake Geloff swings and uh, misses. That's going to be a doozy also. Dave Fleming and Jessica Mendoza will be on the call. Two Stanford Cardinal on the call. Yeah. Oh, Wait a minute. Got another one here. And who's playing tomorrow night? That's right. I think Vandy. I don't remember who the other team is. Who is it? I'll have to look that up. Some red team. <laughs> oh. One, two. <clears throat> Going to get a chance to call the Cardinal here at the College World Series. Is that a first for you to call? Your first game I ever did on television, Super Regional in 2003. I'm not sure why they invited me back, but they did. It was Stanford Long Beach State with uh, Jared Weaver pitching for Long Beach. And I don't think I've had him since in the booth. And obviously, they're never at the World Series. No. Uh -uh. Kyle, remember, standout pitcher at Stanford. Standout. And he did a lot of other things there, too. <laughs> Good old Tasmanian Devil, too. Yeah, that's a good choice. <laughs> Long list of good choices. <laughs> Nothing better than your freshman year going with six guys to get a tattoo. You and your freshman buddy get one of the four upperclassmen peel off. Yep. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yep. Doesn't come off in the shower either. <laughs> <laughs> De Bruyne and the leadoff man retired. Did you get another tattoo after that at any point? No. 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 No, that was it. I mean, I, I make plenty of poor decisions, but generally I don't double up. I kind of learn after the first right. one. Move on to I'll go screw something else up, but I'm not going to do that again. So no, nope, that's it. Just one. I'm sure people out there want where is it? We've played this game before. <laughs> but I can't assume the same audience. Yeah, I keep getting uh, told that. TV don't assume the same Come audience. On. Where is it? What do you want me to show a tattoo? I just wanted to well, my ankle. Oh. Another bad decision. I've got feelings, yeah. Carl. Sometimes I think you forget that. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the sensitive Kyle Peterson here tonight. That's right. Oh, you're killing me here. <laughs> yep. 
Preston Johnson. Oh, good. <laughs> Let's see how far Eddie hits it. Yep. Nice specs. I like it. I was thinking a lot of really oh, bad words yeah. right there. I didn't say him. I was That's just thinking a lot of bad words right Get the there. thought bubble there. Yep. <laughs> Dr. Furnace. Oh, my God. Ramon behind the plate has been very, very vocal tonight. In fact, the umpires behind the plate have been really communicative with their Pitchers and catchers. Hey. One ball, one strike. Very different inning so far for Preston Johnson. Came on in relief, left the bases loaded in the second, and trying to go one, two, three here in the third. Chris Newell had a big double and an RBI. After a sacrifice twice Virginia has sacrificed with nobody out got the guy to second and the next guy has picked it up two and two That's good stuff right there. So he goes back up right now with the fastball. By much. Tell you this, I mean, Nadas has been very good behind the plate so far. He's been consistent, not giving the corners, just right here. And this one's down. Tanner trying to stick it behind the plate. Three and two. This one to left field, and Cumbus towards the line will have room and he'll make the play. One, two, three inning for Preston Johnson. McGarry back to the mound. He hasn't given up a hit yet. Starting to see some clouds get a little dark. That may be the only possibility to slow down Griff McGarry tonight. We head to the fourth inning of a four nothing game. Two, three, four up for Mississippi State. Strike number one. Starting to get that change up over first pitch too. That's what's going to make him more even more dangerous as the game goes along. OK so that one looked a little bit more get me over steal a strike. Oh. And then we've seen the one that looks like a split. So if we can now add depth to a change up too, we can steal a strike with the first one then we can add depth later on. He's he's showing you everything tonight. Beach ball. Right you turn. You turn. Yep. Beach ball. There we All go. Right, there we go. A little help from Kyle Teal. Yes, sir. Hey. Microphone's in that warning track out there. You can hear the this is cool. kicks being put down yeah. in that dirt. Got a lot of options now, one and two. Challenge him, and we're at 97. And it's just easy 97 so far for Griff McGarry. He's making money. And a lot of it. I believe that was the Vulcan grip. Guys, look how far Kyle Teal's playing Tanner Allen. That is as deep as I've seen in outfield. Not even Arizona was playing this deep earlier on in this College World Series. Two two and it's just foul playing off the line was Geloff. He's done everything for Mississippi State this year. Tanner Allen has been outstanding. 
10 homers, 62 RBIs. He and Roddy Jordan, roommates and the leaders of this team. 2-2 two -two and he fishes. He's a great fisherman, but not there, and he's thrown out. All right, this is funny last inning, okay? Last last out's a ground ball. So McGarrett goes over and he's gonna flip it to, to Jake Geloff. Watch this. Geloff looks at it, he's like, give me the ball back. Give me the ball back. Geloff's like, no, we're hitting now. I'm not giving you this one back. It was all scuffed up. He takes it in and flips it. If you're still pitching, that's fine. I'll give it back to you. But now I gotta go ahead. I'm not throwing the scuffed one back in. Flips it out of there and make Preston Johnson grab a new one. Well, what was McGarry gonna do with it? Just put it on the mound? Like, does he think that ball was gonna be there I, when I he got back? I don't know, but he wasn't gonna get it. I can tell you that. I think he knew the same thing right there. He's like, this one cannot go back. No, on it's exactly what it was. We're hitting now. I don't. Yeah. Nope. Two and a sweeping breaking ball from McGarry. Would he take a no-no into the seventh and super? Yep. This is that type of stuff tonight. He's got an idea of what he wants, and he and Logan Michaels now on the same page. Oh, that's out. oh wow, he was stepping like he got strike out number five, but he didn't. I'll tell you what, he's dancing up there right now on the mound, too. Wanted that, and I mean, that is behind the plate is very consistent so far on that pitch, not giving it at all. And should have given it. Woo. 96 and strikeout number five. It's consistent, man. I mean, get ahead, climb the ladder with the fastball. He's been able to throw it on both sides of the plate. He's shown his smart side run with the left handers are in there. That one holds playing and just stays there. Sliders play, the changeups played. He's got three going for a strike and he's throwing 97. Advantage, that guy. Luke Hancock next up for his pitch oh, runs high. Ready on the 1 0. Oh. That gets a piece of the plate. 1 and 1. Consistently in the mid to upper 90s. Looks like there's more in there, too. I mean, we're not max effort out there when we're bumping 95, 96, 97. Good watch. After every pitch that he throws out of the zone, he gets out of the mound a little bit, regroups. Settles down, takes a deep breath. He's ready to throw the next one. If he throws a strike, he's right back on that rubber. Two ball, two strikes. That one got a piece of Hancock. Those hurt. And it always hits where you don't have any protection. You can have the biggest shin guard out there, and it'll miss, and it'll hit skin. So you have a big crowd here, but Kyle, when you think about home field advantages, Mississippi State is in the small group of colleges that have the best one, do they not? Well, people who don't know much about Mississippi State's home field. Do yourself a favor. If, if you're a baseball fan, that would be a college baseball fan. If you're a baseball fan, make your way to Duty Noble for a weekend series at some point. And just spend the entire weekend there. Go get you some Little Dewey's barbecue. Call it a, call it a full weekend, because it is college baseball <laughs> at its finest. He wanted that one, and that one was outside. I think his zone's been great. It's been phenomenal. It really has. Now he's going with the heater. Like, hold it. I caught it. Right. I caught it, and then you guys 
How does how does this work? It was I caught it, you chug. <laughs> oh, <that's, laughs> I think that was the game they were playing. The age old game. Three and two, and that's foul. I think he has a curveball and a strike for him right here. He has so far today. Well, he can do a 3 2. Even if you're up by four, you've already thrown two fastballs. He's fouled one up in the zone. And then that one, he pulled it. This will be the time. Or does it go right back to the number one? It hard they were playing deep at second and Cody will throw him out well positioned we'll talk to Brian O'Connor the head man of Virginia about what McGarry is doing and the fast start his team's off to tonight Virginia leading four to nothing over Mississippi State and we are joined by Brian O'Connor hi coach uh, McGarry you guys have a great deal of confidence in him what is he showing you tonight well, he's showing us, Ravi, what he's done the last two weeks. He's pounded the strike zone with multiple pitches. Um, you know, I just hope he keeps it up. He, he, he looks like he has in the regional and super regional. And when he, he does that and pounds the strike zone with that many pitches, he's pretty tough. Brian, you got your hitters came out swinging first pitch against McLeod. Was that part of the game plan? Yeah, it was. It is to be aggressive and make, but make sure that there's clarity with, with what you're doing. And our guys did a really nice job with it and were opportunistic there when we got guys in scoring position. You having fun being back home? No, it's great to be here. Where, where else do you want to be, be in <laughs> June, Ravi? You know that. I hear you. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. Thank you. So he told us, too, he recruited you. Is that correct? KP? Um, well, he said so. Yeah. Yeah, but I, th I thought he was there when I went on my recruiting. Oh, yeah. On my recruiting trip. Great. Yeah. Remember the yeah. conversation? Apparently not. Obviously, the pitch wasn't very good. <laughs> 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 I'll listen, but I won't. It's kind of like it's kind of like Teddy in a couple of the conversations you've had with him as he was growing up. I'm really not listening, Dad, but you can keep talking. What's our address again? Okay, thanks, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <Some> boy. <laughs> right field, and that's going to go into the seats. There's not a whole heck of a lot of room there between the right field foul line and the seats. Guys, this is how the game started. 0-2 on Gela. Worked it all the way for a base hit. Tough out, understands the zone real well. Just grinds out bats. Five for six in Omaha is Zach Geloff. He's two for two tonight with a single and a double. Oh, two hit that hard, and he is three for three. And Zach Geloff on an 0 2 pitch delivers. Leadoff man aboard again for Virginia. So Zach and Jake played on one championship team together. That was back in high school. Zach was a senior and Jake was a freshman. They never thought that they would recreate this playing for a championship again. Jake actually committed to William and Mary. He opened up the recruitment and it was Zach going in Coach O'Connor's ear saying, hey, recruit my brother. So I didn't want to do it too much because I still want to get some playing time. But uh, they said it's been a joy to be up here. They came as a family in 2014 to watch Virginia and it's been a blast. Well, deja vu all over again, KB. Geloff on, sacrifice Cotier. And now Teal, who is two for two. If you want to win in the College World Series or any part of the regionals and super regionals, you have to be fundamentally sound, especially here, where not a lot of mistakes are made. You have to take advantage of any single, especially with this ballpark being so big, the way it plays. The Cavaliers have kept the line moving. And those outs, three so far, sacrifice bunts have worked for them. We started to talk about it earlier. I remember Augie Garrido talking about the sack bunt early at the College World Series. And the specific point was, I think, the other side starts to play tight if they're down early. And he would do it second hitter of the game like Kevin McMullen did tonight, the hitting coach and, and recruiting coordinator for Virginia. And the entire thought was, in this environment, if we got him down early, I think the other side is going to play differently. And it, uh, it worked out okay for Augie for 25 years. Yeah. You know, I, I played in Japan for one year, 2001, and I asked because because over there professionally, 
you get on base as a leadoff hitter, the next hitter automatically bumps. It doesn't matter where you are in the in the lineup. And they say that psychologically it's an advantage to be able to have a runner in scoring position from the get go and get that one nothing lead. Hello. And a tough read for Geloff at second, and he will only get to third. The ball hung up. Scotty DeBrule, the second baseman, actually had the best chance at it, but another hit. Teal, like Geloff, three for three. Teal's gone after every pitch so far in this game. Saw the first pitch base hit. Runner at second, this one right here. Check it out in tomorrow's newspaper, or you can go later on the internet and see that it was a line drive. That's all I've got for you. Well, they've been very active tonight with the sacrifices. They got a speedy runner at first base, the five stolen bases, and their cleanup hitter up. A lot of sliders last time up against Devin. Looks like he will not be seeing him for the second time. So Chris Lamonis heads to the mound and it looks like Preston Johnson's night is over. Two right is warming and he will make the move. We'll leave with runners at first and third. One man down. Bottom of the fourth, Virginia four, Mississippi State nothing. They bring in Chase Patrick. Patrick will make his 17th appearance, a 2.13 ERA. See the innings and the strikeouts. You're looking, he's looking for the double play right now. One out, runners at first and third. Got good little action on that sinker. Try to feed off Devin Ortiz's aggressiveness. Let the infield do the work. So we talked about the Geloff brothers and this is not the first time obviously they've played together in fact during the pandemic they both were back home they got a little workout gym at home they got a batting facility they play catch a lot in fact before each game they will play catch with each other they played at various times in the bagel bombers travel club pardon me yeah the bagel bombers travel club okay. loose little league Think in middle school, the two seasons at Cape Henlope and High. But I'm interested in the Bagel Bombers Travel Club. I might need one of those hats. It's pretty cool. I like that. It's yeah. so all sorts of good things that seem to be possible with the Bagel Bombers. So Chase Patrick inherits a first and third one out deal, and Devin Ortiz, the DH. And again, you can keep an eye at first base with Teal and his five stolen bases. They've been aggressive tonight with sacrifices, moving runners on and in. He's not going, and the first pitch is going to be a strike. Four nothing in the bottom of the fourth. Both these teams one and zero to start this College World Series. Texas the winner. The loser will get the Longhorns on Thursday. Stanford Vanderbilt tomorrow night elimination game. Double header on Friday here in Omaha. Ortiz for the third time he popped out and he was hit by a pitch. On the ground this is a double play. De Bruyne Forsyth exactly what Lamotis needed and he gets it. Devin Ortiz, 4-6-3 DP. We're through four. We stay four nothing. Grid McGarry keeps doing this. He's gonna have the keys to the city when it leaves. Breaking ball, breaking ball. More breaking ball. So it was fastball up early, and then he's been finishing with this thing. It's got depth, it's got some side to side. We said it earlier, man. He's got control of all three. That slider. Change up that he can, I mean, really make look like a split. And then a mid to upper 90s fastball, one white, one walk, five strikeouts through the first four. Where will
will Mississippi State get their offense. Looking for hit number one, Logan Tanner, Scotty DeBrule, started that double play, and Brad Cumbest. Gary has worked quick, has not fallen behind many at all. First pitch strike's been a key for him. And he will get another one. The question is, will Teal be able to make the Runs out of room. He was an accomplished football player, so it wouldn't surprise anybody to see him get into that first or second row. Doesn't feel like what it used to in this ballpark. Ball one. I know we've got a ton of swing and miss already in this. We've also seen, also seen plenty of home runs, but um, it's the ballpark does not feel like it is part of the discussion. Not nearly as much as so it far, used to be. Absolutely, that, that is a positive. It is a good thing. It's like a good umpire. You're not talking about it much. On a line, and it's Max Cody, an easy play, one down. So a lot of soft contact, too, when they do make contact, which has just been rare. It's been one ball barrel. Yeah. One. It was a line drive to center field that Logan Tanner hit. That's it. So you run into these guys, and again, we showed the graphic of the pitchers that have had real success here. When do you change your approach? Meaning, Laying a bunt down. Just get him out of his rhythm. It's funny. After we've seen those performances, some of the other coaches have been asked that question, and they kind of shake their head like, yeah, I'd probably do that. One pitch, grounder, Geloff to Geloff, who will sit there and tag Scotty DeBrule. Yeah, that'll be a brother to brother discussion yeah, we, later. Exactly. <laughs> we play catch every day before the game. <laughs> This we do this nonstop at home. Once you catch it, shuffle your feet. Don't take that extra step. Watch his reaction right here. Mm. Okay, I'll clean your laundry next week. <laughs> the Geloff brothers, and here's Brad Cumbest. Two quick outs for McGarry here in the fifth. This ball to left field towards the gap. Tappen going over, and he'll make the play. A little more exit velo, but quick. That was. Chris Lamotis will join us when we come back in a 4 nothing hole. Bottom five, Chris Lamotis is the head coach, and he joins us now. Chris, we've seen a lot of really good pitching performances. What are you singing from their pitcher tonight? And it's been really good. I mean, we were a little concerned. We thought he might be a little wild coming in, but I mean, he has been crisp like he was last week. It's uh, fastballs on you, but it's a nice mix of all speed. I mean, he's really, really kept us off balance. Christian McLeod tonight, shortest start of his career. He, he gives you four outs today. What did you see as, as the biggest issue when he was out there? Just uh, not hitting spots. And his, you know, normally he has a really good breaking ball, and it just, just didn't have good spin. Those two lefties got on it, and that usually, I mean, never happens. And you hate it for the kid. He's such a great yeah. kid, and we're not here, be, you know, without him. And, you know, you have a tough outing. You know, it's hard taking him out, but uh, he'll get another opportunity. But uh, just, you know, just didn't have it tonight. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, guys. Back here in Nebraska, TD Ameritrade. Ball number one, Parker Stinnett, new pitcher for Mississippi State. Chase Patrick came in, got the ground ball double play. Right out of Oxford, Mississippi. Oh. High and tight. They can throw some arms at you now. 30 strikeouts in 17 of the third innings. Mississippi State during the course of this one. Broke the all-time single-season strikeout record for a team. On the ground, that's a one-hopper. DeBrule will throw to first, and Nick Kent retired. 
So you're watching college baseball for the first time. You're seeing the World Series here at ESPN, ESPN2. Is there a formula? Because a lot of the times, Kyle, you see several of the same teams, whether it's Vanderbilt or Texas. The Tennessee's building something. Virginia back here. SEC's always represented. Is there a formula for success at the college level, especially if you're from a college that you haven't seen your team here? Well, you got to have arms to start. I mean, everybody that got here has got at least at least one frontline starter or two. But I, I think the other thing that we're seeing, and we're seeing more of now, is is athletic lineups. So it's not the lineups just stand up and hit it as far as you possibly can, but it's lineups that can cause you different problems. You get a little speed at the top. You get some power in the middle. You get some guys that can move the baseball around. And and I I feel like we're seeing more balance in lineups now than we did, you know, eight, nine, ten years ago when when we were talking how many bunts there was in a game. It's back to it's back to real baseball. Yep. Yep. And the defense up the middle has been absolutely great. And that's one thing that identify you can identify with teams that go on to the winning bracket shortstop second baseman center fielders that can cover a lot of ground and catchers that can block and throw. LT looking for a new glove so Tanner's got to replace the mint. So since 1967 you see the West Coast the Titans there with four SC of course eight of them. And then the Southeast obviously upper Midwest and the Northeast not heavily represented the Tigers of LSU six national championships. And they're looking for a new head coach down at LSU. Right? Is that a left field? That a great job. Is that a plum job. Yeah, I mean it's it's got to be a top five job. I mean, you just look at the history and the fan interest. Yep. And, you know, they're leading the country every year in attendance, or if not, they're right at the top. Yeah. Still one of the absolute top jobs in this game, and it has gotten plenty of interest. Oh no no! DK. Yeah, it's punched out. Alex Tappan, strikeout victim of Parker Stinnett. That was Katzenmeyer at first, all over it. Mm. Yeah, close. <laughs> Let's just say we've seen others that have more egregious, been more egregious, and not called strikes. One of the biggest pet peeves of hitters is a little help, and when the help just doesn't help you even more. <laughs> Add on to that. The freshman Jake Geloff, he's the first baseman, walked and scored, grounded out to second, and that's oh, no. wild. We'll go one and one. Virginia beat Tennessee six to nothing. Tennessee losing to Texas earlier today, so it's over for Coach Vitello and the volunteers. But what a year they had. They reestablished themselves, and there's a whole heck of a lot of interest in going to. Be a fan and play Rocky Top right now. That was a fun environment, man. I guess Lindsey Nelson is rocking again in Knoxville. Vols hadn't been here since 2005, and I know it was a quick trip, but not going to be long before you see him back. Tony Vitello is rebuilding a program, and they are well on their way to being regulars here. Jake Geloff got on top of that. He's got his first hit. He's reached base twice, so the Geloff brothers four hits tonight for Virginia. Yeah, he can join the party. His brother got in a couple knocks in the in the first game. He went 0 for three in that one. It's part of that six nothing win over Tennessee. This guy Logan Michaels had three hits, including his first home run of the season. Steady diet of sliders from Parker Stinnett. We talk about Tennessee, their facilities looking to be upgraded. That's a great block, and he's going to throw down. Good 
throw, but it was a tough catch for DeBrule, and he's called out. Geloff immediately looks into his staff and says, check that. DeBrule seemed to stumble a little bit on his way to second. How about this arm, Eddie? That's pretty impressive right there. Watch how quick. On the block, he gets it right there and just hose. I don't think he tagged him. I think he might have got his left arm. The bro was off balance. He's safe. Yeah, I don't think he, uh, if he did tag him, he didn't tag him before his right hand got down. I mean, the throw's absolutely there. It just, it, it's like it, it locked up to Brule. Yeah. He's safe. He's safe. AP, if you decide to slide like that, how many people need to help you to get up from there? If I had just done that, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know where they bring the cart in from here, <laughs> but it had right been here. rolling in from somewhere. Right, that move right there. Oh, did he get a little bit of the jersey? I don't think he did. I don't think he did either. Watch the left sleeve. Oh, he's I already on the bag, though. I don't. I think he's safe. Yeah, he's safe. You see the approach too. As soon as that ball was in the dirt, Geloff was off and running. It was just fielded so cleanly by Tanner. And in fact, if you look at it, I think Tanner double pumped. He did. He did. And I mean, the throw was exactly where he needed it too. Yep. I think it just it, it's De Bruyne got his feet crossed up a little bit. When he got his feet crossed up, the glove was turned the wrong way. Um, Logan Tanner's a big leader defensively behind the play. Now we'll see if the bat plays enough to be regular when it gets into pro ball but man the catch and throw skills are elite. So the call is out at second base. Will it stand or be overturned. Oh, they call him out, and he doesn't understand it. It maybe it was the jersey. Geloff's folks are both attorneys. They need to have somebody plead a case for him. Mississippi State looking for their first hit of the game against Virginia. We head to the sixth. Griff McGarry has been terrific, and he's been fairly economical as well. That's pitch 65, and it's ball number one. Been living around 96, 97 miles an hour. And he has shown three strong pitches. That's it hard. Whoa, it almost took Cartier's glove with him into right, but a shot. And they're starting to square him up a little bit. Last inning in this one, hard hit ball is just right at him. Oh, that was a shot right off the bat. Just listen right here. Positioned perfectly for Cody. De Bruyne hit it hard. Cumbus hit it hard. Clark just hit it hard. Now Lane Forsyth, and that's off ball one. Because he's been so accurate, you can't wait for strikes because he throws them, and then you're behind, and he's got some wipeout stuff tonight. Five strikeouts. Carl, you talk about messing with his rhythm. So many ways you can do it. Either you can bunt, try to get him off the mound, or you see right there, he goes to the bell of the cap. Oh, Ooh. no, no. <laughs> he got it. Wow. And you can go and ask and sort of just get him off his game a little bit. Even though the bell looks clean, it's part of the game, the psychological part. After every pitch, he goes right to it. And we know where baseball has gone, at least at the major league level and professional level. That's strike three, and the slider, like Jeff Nelson back in the day for the Mariners and Yankees, filthy. Strikeout number six. He's on. And the tight spin, man. As a hitter, you see that, you buckle, there's no chance. Watch his knees. Oh, forget it. 
I'm not saying he has anything or he's just doing that because of custom. I'm just saying try to get him off his game. 100 percent. I mean you got to try to slow him down to some extent. I know we talked about it earlier but I mean the stuff is one thing the efficiency is another. But the pace has been it's just get it and go get it and go and they, they, they haven't forced McGarry to alter his pace at all today. Just one base runner from Mississippi State is a two out walk to De Bruyne back in a second. Rowdy Jordan the leadoff hitter has now come up twice with two outs. You good bud? Are you sure? Right off the mask with Logan Michaels and ahead 0 and 2. Been drinking some blue Gatorade or something during the uh, half inning. <laughs> Tongue and teeth are all blue. Here comes McGarry one more time. You see that quick rub of the bill of the cap. Let's go. Let's not give him that baseball back. We'll give it to the fan. Where we go here. I go hot heat. Vulcan me. You go another one. You double up on it. He wants the heater. Oh. Ooh. Inside. Jordan pleading his case that it hit him. I would be pleading too. I'm 0 2. I'm pleading it. Check it out, man. think we would go and review this. I'm not sure that any of these guys would say yeah we saw it. But it definitely hit him. Might be on second base umpire Jim Henrich. Well, this clearly will not sit well. Although Jordan's gone back and picked up his bat. I would not pick up the bat. Well, you can you can review it. Yes, you can. Yeah, it's it's review, but this is we got to get past this. Bring everybody together and have a long extended discussion about. It. It's really simple. Did it hit him? Did it hit him? Did it hit him? I mean, what else are we talking about? Now let's go look at it, get it over with. Yes, it did hit him. Get him down to first. It's the additional time that it takes to do this drives me nuts. I, I understand. If you want to have a quick discussion? That's fine. But this one is really simple. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? All right, let's go look. It's the right decision. The, just, pro the process of getting there was a wee bit painful. Yeah. I mean, if I'm Brian O'Connor, I'm like, hold on. So the guy that's five feet away didn't see it, but you're 95 feet away, and you're telling me you know for sure? Th this is the whole point of replay. <laughs> Again, this whole thing could have been done very, very easily. And I don't blame it. That would be my point. Yeah. My point would be just just look at it. You, you can't tell me that guys a long ways away from it can look at it. Just look at it. Now it's not going to take any time. They should have done this from the get-go. They should have done it right away. Just go take a buzz him. Buzz him down there. Boys take a look. Yes, put him on first base. I'm glad that we have it. But I, I, I the process to me is way too drawn out. Second from the bottom on the reviewable plays hit by pitch. I just wonder if we could evolve this even further where you have the ability to communicate with the crew chief let alone the home plate umpire but the crew chief and you can say you can after reviewing it without having to go through this process well I'm saying you can buzz him he got hit just buzz him yeah. right away see and the problem is right there 
where Ramon Armendariz behind the plate did not see it because the catcher's mitt is in between no. his eyes and the contact and of where it is for him. I'm not knocking a home plate umpire. Right. I mean, it's like real time. It's almost impossible, right. especially when the ball's almost caught. It's just let's utilize this. Take a look at it. Get it. Go. Put him on first. Let's play the baseball game. So Jordan, after getting hit, second base runner, there was a walk. And the first chance here with two down tenor, Allen. First pitch fastball poured in there at 96, strike one at the knees. This guy can change this game real quick with one swing. And a very tough SEC, he batted over 400. Rowdy Jordan roommates, they walked off the field after the super win. Arms draped over each other, going back to Omaha. Three years, they've been to Omaha every year that we've had a season conclude at the College World Series. That's another good pitch. Right at the knees, 95, and behind one ball, two strikes. The top of the chest, recognition, I got two on me. Peeking over Jake Gotro who runs this offense, just reminding him, and that's one reason it is tough to strike out this Mississippi State team, one of the toughest in the country. Got him swinging at a slider in the dirt. They'll throw the first, another strikeout. McGarry fired up there. After a hit, Jordan, he picks up strikeout number seven. Got him twice already in this game. Tanner Allen goes down. Mississippi State still down by four. Here we go from the back bench. Welcome back to the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. High above TD Ameritrade home plate. Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson, Carl Ravich. Hey, look forward to seeing the Cubs and the Dodgers Sunday night, 7 o'clock Eastern time, preceded by baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown. Cubs, Dodgers. 7 o'clock Eastern Time. That's the Sunday night baseball game. Dave Ross, Dave Roberts, the managers, and the first pitch popped up straight away center field. Rowdy Jordan there. Logan Michaels, who got connected in the head on that last play last inning, is out. Been a scintillating week for the SEC. Tennessee 0 and 2, Vanderbilt 0 and 1, and now Mississippi State. Yeah, 1 and 1. Check that. Curveball on the corner, strike one. Vandy 1 and 1, Tennessee out. Mississippi State last chance to go 2 and 0. Oh. That ball is hit hard, and they had the shift on, and right through it it goes. Number nine hitter Chris Newell, two for three tonight. More arms in that Mississippi State bullpen. Makes sense because the schedule for them, if they can't now to come back, Thursday, win Thursday, play Friday. Tolerant Smith. Now you got to go through the gauntlet right here. Top three hitters in this lineup. Seven for seven with two sack bunts. Runner goes, first pitch, ball, throw down, not in time, and it's backed up. But a stolen base for Newell, his 13th of the year. You now we talked so much about Tanner's throw. Watch, watch his footwork right here. He stays back. He doesn't go through it. Stays there, just recoils instead of following that throw, and that's one of the reasons why he pulled off it. Throws him just recoils back, and last time we seen him throw, follows through with the throw that he had just made. So instead of a sacrifice, just a stolen base, Geloff an RBI opportunity, three for three. He 
He lets you know how that felt. It just was a whiff by Tanner. And to third base goes Newell. Can't make it up, fellas. You cannot make that one up right there. He just whiffed on it. And we felt the pain right there by Ramon. Watch this one. Yeah, he crossed him up. Hits him right. He crossed him up. And in the lineup cards. Sometimes you don't uh, you don't need much more explanation than you got right there. A few words tell the entire story right there. Now you got to be careful on that area right there, just above oh, the absolutely. heart. Absolutely. You know. I'm sure Logan Tanner feels terrible about it. It all relate to uh, Ramon's pain right there, although few of us have ever felt it. We have certainly understood the reaction. And now, though, the runner goes to third base. One out for Geloff. And the 2 0 pitch, he swings at it and sends it high in the air down the right field line and is right at the line. And it will get into the seats. Watch this Tanner Allen's running out of room, running out of room. This was great at the end. Points up. Hey, that was a nice catch right there. <laughs> Two balls and a strike, a single, a double, and then a single. He has scored twice and been left at third base. Parker Stinnett, 2 1. No, no. PK. Yes, he did. Boy, Travis Katzenmeyer's uh, three for three with the appeal and the strike <laughs> call. He just smiles at it. That's, how, that's when you know you're feeling good. You're not letting it get to you. Smile, take a step back, and you're just glad that it's not strike three. You still have a chance. Infield continues to play an important run at third. Oh. Three, two. Three balls, two strikes. You can see some of the fans here at TD Ameritrade now feeling the raindrops. What are starting to fall. We're good. And now you can see them. Three two to Geloff. Got one to hit. He fouls it straight back. During the pandemic shortened season in 18 games, Geloff hit 349. He had 18 RBIs in the 18 games. And a 3 2 oh, will out. not go. That's ball four. Here, Chris Lamona said you're inclined to slow this whole thing down now that it's raining. This may be the way to get McGarry off of his game. He's looking down to his bullpen now. The rain continues to fall here in Omaha. And Max Cordier, the second baseman. And this is not a big surprise. Go to the left hander, and he's coming in. A tough spot. Started down four zip, one down, two on. And we're back after this. You say me? Yeah.
Part of the interesting stories has been the pitching of Vanderbilt, Kamal Rocker, and Jack Leiter. They won the Rocker game, although he wasn't great. Leiter was terrific, and they lost that one. Stanford one and one. You haven't seen Brock Jones play yet for Stanford. He's a star in the making. Ah, uh, yeah. We'll get a chance to see him tomorrow night. And now Stanette is out. Cameron Tuller, the sophomore, is in. And before we dive too deep into Tuller, meteorologist Kyle Peterson has an update. We're good. <laughs> Weather on the ones. Quick, we're good. We're in the sixth inning, and a lot of the Virginia success recently has been in the seventh inning. They had four runs in the seventh inning in each of their last three games. And this is a staff, especially Kevin McMullen, who has been with Brian O'Connor for a long time. There's some consistency in this program. Lamonis just moved over to Mississippi State three years ago. Do a heck of a job scouting and then finding players in the Northeast. Look at this lineup. You get a couple from Delaware. You got one from New Jersey. It's that map that we showed earlier, the teams that have won the national title. There wasn't anybody further north on the East Coast. Right. I mean, it, it's right. I think those kids up in the Northeast, you feel like you're going south when you go to Virginia, but obviously you're going to one of the premier programs in the country. Kevin McMullen, third base coach who runs this offense, has been there since Brian O'Connor got there. The two of them have been there now 18 years and have built this thing into what it is. A lot of two sport, three sport athletes also in the Northeast. So here it is, Max Cotier with the two sacks and the single. First and third, it'll just make sure that Geloff, who has got 13 stolen bases, and they've been very aggressive against Logan Tanner. Corners in, infield, up the middle, playing double play depth here. Cody eight will pop that up, and it's caught. Easy play to try to safety, and that did not work. He's been so good with the bat and the bunting. Interesting there because his swing was a line shot up the middle in which he delivered an RBI on. That's the bat head. Just drops it right there at the end. Top hand collapses. That's exactly what happens when you drop the, bot the top hand on the barrel. Straight up. Time out. New ball. That was a gift, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Now the other red hot bat is Kyle Teal. Jones, the center fielder for Stanford, outstanding player. O'Connor says this is the guy that stands out on his team as well. 78 mile an hour strike. Teal was a massively successful high school football player. Ooh, that's wow. a huge block. Saved a run. He can play the game. He can play the game. Put a check mark on that one. One knee on the ground, but athletically the top part. Watch his glove. Cover that. Use the forearm if you need to. Whatever it takes to keep that ball in front of him. Got a little. Little baseball luck right there too. That one hits off the <laughs> inside part of the glove and goes right back into the chest protector. 
So Teal, who we've seen have that helmet fall off, tough kid out of Malwa High School, 2019, and a state championship football game. He's the quarterback. He's battling the flu. 54 yards for a touchdown, first play of the game. Oh. Comes back to the sideline, says, I just feel like death. I am hurt. Next offensive play, he goes 86 yards for another rushing touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Even worse now. Yep. Still sick. It was 20 degrees out, 10 mile an hour winds. His team won at 37 14 over Westwood High School. That was the fall of 19, and now a star for Virginia's baseball team. 3 1. And a little blooper, the third baseman, right at the line, makes the play. Oh, oh my goodness, he goes over into the camera well, holds on to the ball, and thankfully it looks like Cameron James is okay. Let's hope. Wow, from one football player to another. Watch James and listen to the ovation. What a play from the third baseman. That railing slippery because of the rain. Standing ovation. That's right. Get up. So Andrew Abbott had 10 Ks against Tennessee. That was the first shot out of Tennessee. Since April. And now you have a second pitcher who has not given up a hit in Griff McGarry. That's a one two combination that needs to be recognized here in Omaha. And there's Abbott. Abbott easily could have been drafted last year, but with the draft shut down to five rounds, he comes back. Kyle has pointed out, I've got to believe there are some folks watching this game with major league organizations saying, we're going to have to do a little more work on Griff McGarry. Yeah, I got a feeling there's a few scouting directors and GMs and assistant GMs going, okay. What are the reports on this guy? Could take me back to, to March and tell me what we saw and then compare that to what I'm seeing tonight because what I'm seeing tonight is stuff that plays in the big leagues. Cameron James made that incredible catch in that camera well and he is the guy who's leading off here now behind. Oh and two. Seven punch outs for McGarry tonight. To himself now, you gotta love that. Oh. Good spot, it's where he wanted to throw. Mm. 92 with some elevation on it. Strikeout number eight. It did in the first inning, Eddie. Didn't punch out anybody in the first after that. He's had at least a strikeout in every inning. Yes, we're going to start talking about it because he's got one of those going. Last time we saw no hitter here, Eddie was seven. 1960. Jim O. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're a funny guy. Well, this ball just driven to right field and deep. Teal at the wall. Into the glove. Yeah. Gave it a ride. You're, making, you're, people, you're making people nervous at home. How many people were just yelling at me right oh, yeah. there? He Didn't did talk. it. I told you when they talk about it, it jinxes it every time. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the G version of what the people were saying. Oh. Yes. Love the mouth open, by the way, Carl. Did you see how far the former quarterback threw the ball? There were three cutoff, man. He threw it on one hop to the pitcher. Right at the warning track this afternoon game Tennessee had at least three balls that probably would have left their ballpark but not here at TD Ameritrade Park. So a long out here's Logan Tanner and that one to center field backing up and under it. 
is Chris Newell. They've hit the ball hard here, especially the last couple of innings, but still a zero in the hit column for Mississippi State. New pitcher, Cade Smith, sixth of the night, Mississippi State. Story of the game has been Griff McGarry for Virginia, who has not allowed one. And all four runs came in the first two innings for Virginia. The bullpen for Mississippi State has been great. That's great play by Logan Tanner. He's made a few of those hockey saves. Just the one whiff, which Ramon Almendares felt. Yes, why not? Every time. Travis is. Got a strike call and a check swing. I believe we're four for four now. Yeah, he's on a roll over there. <laughs> yep, he did. He got that one. Devin Ortiz behind one and two. Smith says no to the first one, likes the second, and that's bounced our change up at 84. Mississippi State tonight, and we talked about it early. Obviously, you need some offense, but if the score holds and it ends up like this, you have got some guys, and this is a really deep bullpen. I think, to me, their bullpen, their staff as a whole, Virginia's bullpen, Texas' bullpen, probably the deepest that are here. Um, they have the arms to come back Good. through That's a loser's effort. bracket if, if this one stands. They've got plenty of guys that have been out there tonight. Penn's done their job. Five innings, five hits. Have not given up, given up a run. One and zero to Nick Kent. Two and zero. It's a Virginia team again. They lost the opener of the regionals and the super regionals, and they have won 12 of their final 18 games. And as good as the bullpen has been for Mississippi State, let's not forget Virginia hasn't used its bullpen tonight. So starting pitcher Nate Savino will be in line, assuming they win, to start the next game with a completely rested bullpen. I and mean, they couldn't be in a better position if they could hold this thing. And there's Stephen Schock, who became somewhat of a cult hero with his post-game interview during If you could put a microphone on somebody through the course of the game, yep. he would be no, he'd be nominee number one. Yeah, and two and three. <laughs> we just have to have that seven second delay with him. It's all right. You never know what can come out of that mouth. That's what the button's for. It's a mature audience. Learned all about his dipping dots. Love affair. In fact, I believe the Dippin' Dots company sent an entire crate of them to Virginia. Ball That's four. ball four. So Shock was staying at the same hotel that all the Olympic swimmers were staying at. And so he's walking through the lobby and he sees this guy playing with a dinosaur. He's like, what's that guy doing? Oh, that guy was Michael Phelps. <laughs> so Phelps was on a FaceTime with someone, both of them from Baltimore. And the guy on the FaceTime was like, wait a second. Is that the Dippin' Dots guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All those gold medals. That guy's got Dippin' Dots. Mike, can you hang on it for a second? Let me just say that. <laughs> Steven. <laughs> he has uh, exited through that door behind him. So Alex tapping bats one out. Bottom seven. Home team up four zip. They got all four in the first two innings. And there they are. That ball hung up in the zone. Rowdy Jordan, center fielder, made a great diving catch. Supers against Notre Dame there to make the play. Have you 
you've been in this position before, KP, with the, the no hitter, and what 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 were you thinking about? Uh, yeah. He took one two outs into the eighth against Fullerton one year. First night, actually, first night game at Stanford. Uh, what was I thinking? I shook off a breaking ball to the nine hole hitter because I was feeling myself a little bit through a fastball. He hit a seed to center, and there went the no hitter. Mm -hmm. Did Dean you Stotts, who's in town, no, he's not coaching anymore at Stanford, but did forever, was our pitching coach, and he will never let me forget it, ever. Had you shaken off before in that game? Was oh, that yeah, I shook a ton. Yeah. yeah. But that's the closest I ever came at any level. When the ball was hit and it fell for it, did you immediately say to yourself, why did I shake? Uh, no, I was saying a lot of other things to myself <laughs> right then. Um, but that was that was a part of the conversations with conversation with myself. Here's the thing though, I mean you could see in the first, and obviously most of the time this doesn't end up being that way. He had as oh, yeah. that stuff tonight. Yep. I mean there's times where you just see guys and go, woo. And that looks a little different, and it's looked a little different from McGarry since the first pitch of the ball game. Well, this is back-to-back -back starts in which he will take the no-hitter into the seventh, and now into the eighth. Here, it's going to be a tough play for Forsythe. Backhand, and he goes to second in time to get Kent. Here he comes into the eighth inning. Welcome back everyone to the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Night four of this 2021 series and Virginia has got a four nothing lead over the Diamond Dogs of Mississippi State. Hell State here crowd looking for some activity here against Griff McGarry. He has been outstanding tonight. See the numbers seven innings. He's got eight strikeouts. There's only been two base runners a walk in the second and a hit batter in the sixth. Yeah, Ravi, a lot of times we see pitchers like this and they're locked in in the dugout and no one's allowed to talk to them. That is the complete opposite. He was chatting with Kyle Teal half that inning and then his catcher, Logan Michael, comes up to him and he goes, let's roll. He's got six, seven, eight. DeBrule, Cumbest, and Kellum Clark. And ahead quickly, 0-2. Oh We've seen the fastball and then the breaking pitch on the outside corner. Eddie, you're a hitter. Go ahead. Tell us, you know, what your approach would be. Uh, he's on right now. You know what? They've tried several things. Swinging early. They barreled some pitches up, and if you look at the last couple innings, they've actually put on some pretty good at-bats. They've just, just been unlucky. We saw a line drive to second base. We've seen the hard shot to right field and the center field. No, KP, you even said it. They barreled a few of them. Yeah, last few innings, they definitely have. How about this? Coming into this game, okay, McGarry on the season 35 and two thirds innings 40 more walks than innings this year he's walked one tonight he's hit one and has filled up the zone. He's getting tired too that is 96. Yeah. Yep. But wherever Michaels has put the glove for the most part he's hit it and that was another example right there that's a good spoil by De Bruyne on a high fastball. And you were right right off the bat ignore the numbers. That's a foul ball. Because those numbers ju they jump off the page at you. It's not now. I, it's what, I mean it's it's it hasn't been the last two weeks. I mean it, this cat was thrown on Wednesdays like six weeks ago. You don't play real games on Wednesdays in college baseball but they got him back and he found something and. And talking to. To Brian O'Connor today, he's, I mean, it was very straightforward. The stuff that we've seen the last few weeks is the stuff that, that we know he's capable of. You want to talk about an arm that totally changes a team's ability to win a national championship? Yeah. You're staring at it right now. Oh. So far, we've seen 91 pitches. 68% of them are good for strikes. Oh, no, no. Oh, 
Oh, you got to check over at first base. <laughs> <laughs> go with Travis. I know you have to go to third, but for the love of the game right here, you did not go at all. Here comes the heat. A hit batter and a walk. The only guys that have reached to lead off Matt here in the eighth on a 3 2. That's down. Ball four. Good call. And DeBru the leadoff man aboard. And this is the first time you get a leadoff hitter now on board against him. Pitches down. Good call. Gary started the regional against ODU and went three and a third. He gave up three earned runs. He walked four. He did strike out eight, but Brandon Neek was the hero that night. He came on and gave you five and two thirds innings. The last couple of starts have been a completely different world. Brad Cumbus. That's pulled ball one. Good time here. Good job. Logan Michaels goes out and talks to. Pitcher McGarry, who, as we saw, when he does get a little wild, he will pull it glove side, work a little quick, and maybe Logan saw that. And I think that's when you just go out and try to stay. All right, just stay through me. Just stay right through me. Let's try to get right back in line. The strike zone right there would have been a 3 1 count if he would have taken. Graves been on the been around the plate the entire game, tried to cheat to it. Now you got an important first out, still runner at first. And this is Kellen Clark who hit a laser to Cartier at second base. His last time up. We will see Rowdy Jordan and Tanner Allen. Again for Mississippi State. And that ball is drilled to right field, and it is deep, and Teal goes back, looks up, it's gone. A two run home run, Kellum Clark, Mississippi State off the mat, the first hit allowed from Griff McGarry, and it's 4 2 now, Virginia. Fourth of the year for Kellum Clark, and he's arguably got the hardest balls hit tonight for Mississippi State. Wanted to get ahead, 0-1 right there. Instead, he beat him to a fastball. To the spot, first pitch. As soon as he hit it, he knew it. Cut the deficit in half right now, 4-2. And this has become now a wake-up call for the, for the fans here from Mississippi State. Josh Hatcher is going to pinch hit for Lane Forsyth. And all of a sudden, the crowd here in Omaha has 
Broken up. And here comes Brian O'Connor. 99 pitches for Griff McGarry, and the first hit he allows is a two-run shot to Kellum Clark. And he'll turn it over to what has been a very reliable bullpen. was an outstanding effort from Griff McGarry and you know that they will give him an ovation in fact knowing the Mississippi State fans and baseball fans that are here they'll all appreciate an effort like that. Zach Messenger is going to come in the righty. And he will get to the mound and that's where we'll see McGarry exit. Well that'll do it for Griff McGarry tonight but what a night it was didn't strike anybody out in the first and after that Right hander went to work fastball up to 97 really controlled the zone the entire night just two walks one in the second laid off walk in the eighth that would later come around to score on the only hit that McGarry would give up a two run home run to the freshman Kellum Clark but McGarry goes seven in a third punches out eight gives up just the one hit and as it stands right now he's in line for the win which would be his first of the year. He was part of a Virginia no hitter earlier this year. Andrew Abbott started it. That was May 14th against Wake Forest. But McGarry was one of two relievers who combined for it. And now they turn it over to Messenger making his 27th appearance. And Josh Hatcher the pinch hitter and again Rowdy Jordan Tanner Allen. Oh. To come. New ball game. Hatcher, a 190 hitter, two homers, 12 RBIs. A cutter there, 93, and he swings through it. There's only one team that has allowed one or fewer hits in a college World Series game the last three and a half decades over the last 35 seasons. It was Virginia. Nathan Kirby Artie Lewicki a one hitter against Ole Miss in the 2014 College World Series. One and two to Hatcher. Stays alive. Ground in the hole, smothered, long throw. Oh, it's no, it's by the first baseman, Geloff. And they will tag the runner, and he is going to be called safe. Let's see if Hatcher took a big turn there, but according to the first base umpire, Katsumara, there was no turn. What an effort by Nick Kent. Heck of an athletic play, just all arm right there. Geloff can't make the play. But again, Forsyth, I thought maybe had taken a jab step towards second. And here we go with Rowdy yeah. Jordan, the leadoff man for Mississippi State, alive and well here with one out in the eighth inning, down two. Oh. Ball one, and you can feel the momentum shifting here towards Mississippi State. Yeah. That 
pitcher has got good speed over there at first. He has stolen five bases in six attempts. It's like a locomotive coming at you right now with the fan base. The dogs are out. But easy too. That's easy 94. This doesn't appear to be a whole heck of a lot of an effort behind Messenger. Right, up there, up there. Trying to match the largest deficit ever overcome here. South Carolina, Oregon State, 2011 and 17. That's way outside. Two balls and a strike. Tanner Allen, 10 homers, 60 plus RBI on deck. to left center going over there is Newell and he is not going to get it it's over his head it goes to the wall Hatcher will round Jordan's right but now we're going to run down and there's nobody at second base and he gets back safely Rowdy Jordan put his head down and he was determined to get to third base when he looked up Hatcher was standing there and because both Kent and Cartier had went to be cut off, man, there was nobody at second to get the out. Yeah, and if you saw right there on the right side of the screen, Hatcher pulled up a little too early. You have to continue to run until you see this. Watch Hatcher right there. He had already had stopped before the base. You have to be on or past the base when Newell was going to make the play or not. That's why. Jordan right there is wondering what's going on. Fortunately, no one at second base behind Jordan to make a play on him. And it's funny, Rowdy Jordan put his hands up when he saw Hatcher as if to say, what are you doing? And you could see in the background, the baseball was flying towards home yeah. plate. I mean, you get the middle infielders out there to double cut. The first baseman following the cut. There was just nobody at second base. Rowdy Jordan was halfway there. How about this now? Stephen Schock, the closer, who's been so good for Virginia the entire season. His last outing, 75 pitches in the regional, did not pitch in the Super, has not pitched yet here in Omaha. It appears as if he's about to. As O'Connor goes to the mound, and Rowdy Jordan's double after Hatcher with an infield single. Big break for Mississippi State. Nobody there at second base. Jordan was dead to rights. And now he's the tying run with one out. Interesting situation they got going on right here. Tanner Allen now up to the plate. You have first base open. He's the go ahead run. Baseball rule 101 you know about not walking at all the go ahead run. Putting him on base. If there were two outs, I would do it. But with one out, you have to pitch to him. Well, to Kyle's point, this is a big, big story now. Shock, who was rested because he wasn't feeling great in the arm, is now going to make his first appearance in Omaha. One out, eighth inning, down two with two on for Mississippi State. Let's go back here. You can see the third base coach. Breaks are on there for Hatcher. <laughs> The bricks weren't on for that guy, Rowdy Jordan. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and he would have made it easily the third base standing up. Oh, yeah. Hatcher in front of him just was not in the correct position once the ball got by a sentence fielder. Well, and now the kid that became a story based on his postgame interview and his success, really, Stephen Shock. Eight saves. He's a side armor. He's been dealing with a cranky arm. And he's 24 years young. Well, for as much as he is a character on the microphone, he also is on the mound. He talked to me this week about how he has to see red. He will throw his glove. He will get angry. He equated it to like when his dog watches him eat chicken parmesan, and that's all he can focus on. <laughs> Yeah, 
thinking of the same thing. He is a beautiful human right here. All closer. Going to see primarily fastball slider from Shaq. What a moment for Tanner Allen. His buddy Rowdy Jordan out there at second base. The tying run. Allen the go ahead run. This inning started with Griff McGarry on the mound for Virginia having not allowed a hit. He gave up a two run home run to Kellen Clark and then the bullpen doors were open. First messenger and now shock best hitter and player in the SEC conference is at the plate. See where this next pitch is because th this could just be one of those big old unintentional intentional walks you know just don't give him anything good to hit he did and that one is driven to right and it is deep and it is gone Tanner Allen a three run home run Mississippi State five runs in the inning and now lead it five to four Eleventh, the second pitch from Shock into the bullpen. Comeback complete for the Dogs. Circle guy, this is a circle guy. Don't let him beat you. His eyes were right there on point of contact. He knew it once he hit it. Bulldog fans knew it. They're partying right now in Starkville. What a heck of a comeback by the Bulldogs. And the night for Griff McGarry, a no hitter into the eighth inning. A walk, he got a fly out and then gave up a two run home run. And now a three run shot for Tanner Allen, RBI 63, 4, and 5. And there's another one to left on a line. Tappen is there, and that'll retire Cameron James with a second out. I mean, how about it? Two guys are the face of this program right now. Tanner Allen, the SEC Player of the Year, Rowdy Jordan, his roommate, and they are right in the middle of it this inning. Jake Gotro pumping his fist right there. He got the matchup that they wanted now. You got Tanner Allen coming to the plate with a right handed side armor coming. They went breaking ball, breaking ball, and the second one was a three run jack. Two blasts in the inning for Mississippi State, who came into the game with 70 home runs. And to the backstop. This comeback is possible because of what the bullpen. They've given them the opportunity to come back. Shut down baseball. And Virginia scored all four of their runs in the first two innings and zero since. 1 0 to Luke Hancock. Oh. Number five and number four, Tanner Allen and Rowdy Jordan, the heartbeat of this Mississippi State team. They knew they were coming up, and man, did they deliver. Two and one. The first pitch was 73. That pitch 84. The velocity is just not there for Stephen Shock. Huh? And a one run game with six out still for Virginia and their offense. Brian O'Connor's got some more activity in his bullpen. I'm not sure how long you leave Shock in. Foul. 
kid's had an unbelievable year, man. I mean, he's he's one of the reasons why Virginia is here right now. He's out of stuff. At least today he is. I mean, the fastball just doesn't have any pop to it. The spinner is just spinning. And it's it's hard, man, if you're a coaching staff, because your heart's telling me he's been there the entire season. This is the guy that's closed it out at the end, but the eyes don't tell the same story right now. Nate Savino, who they would hope to use as a starter. Throwing hard. Uh, Witten also up for Virginia. You know, but during in between innings when we had that conversation with Coach Chris Lamonis, he was saying the same thing about Christian McLeod. You know, feeling bad, he's one of the big reasons why they are here, but yeah. it's a move that he had to make. Look so far, the bullpen has given Mississippi State this opportunity. 3 2 to Hancock. That one to center. It's going to get down in front of Newell. And Hancock single may signal the end for Stephen Shock tonight. Eight men have come to the plate for Mississippi State. Ron O'Connor doesn't appear to be making that move yet. Now this would be his last hitter if he doesn't get out of it. Logan Tanner. Oh. Two home runs in the eighth inning. Kellum Clark a two run shot. Tanner Allen a three run blast. Mississippi State five Virginia four. Oh, that's out. Well, that looked like a good pitch and if shock's not going to get that he's not long for it. And there they are the two roommates and close friends. Rowdy Jordan number four Tanner Allen number five right in the middle of this five run rally tonight. Jordan's double was his eighth career hit by the way at the World Series which ties him for third all time in Mississippi State World Series history only Mangum and Rusty Toms have more with nine and he's obviously going to get more opportunities. Runner out to second base. Tanner Leggett. Well, if this is the last time you see Shock, he has certainly made an imprint. On this Virginia Cavalier baseball team and the Virginia Cavalier family. And all of it positive. Very authentic, very candid in his post game interviews, oh, yeah. and uh, that type of vulnerability endears you to folks. Nate Savino will come in. Shock will exit. And the Diamond Dogs have got themselves a 5 4 lead with two home runs here in the eighth and a five run inning. Take a break. Back to Omaha and a College World Series. The NCAA College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? 
money tonight. Rowdy Jordan, Tanner Allen, Kellum Clark with a two run home run. Allen, a three run shot. Mississippi State has rallied from a four nothing deficit. It is incredible how quickly this game turned. Griff McGarry, the starter for Virginia, had a no hitter into the eighth inning, gave up a walk, then gave up a two run homer, and there he is, and he was taken out of the game. Nothing allowed, just the one hit. So all plans have changed now. Nate Savino, the sophomore, who it felt like was going to be the starter in their third game, now pressed into duty here. And it's not over for Virginia. They still have two no. at bats. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. It's a one run game right now. Obviously, the. I mean, the momentum and, and the volume level has shifted dugouts right here, but the reality is you're, you're still right in this thing if you're Virginia, but you got to keep it right where it is. So Scotty DeBrule, who got this whole thing started, back up for the second time this inning, he led things off with a walk. And two on. The first pitch. That's through. That's in the hole. That's going to bring in Hancock. He scores 6 4, Mississippi State. First pitch swinging. Scotty DeBrule at a big tack on run. Mississippi State giving Virginia a little bit of their own medicine. We saw this early on in the second inning. Runners at first and second just. Moving them around. Now it's Mississippi State doing it. Left on left. Base hit in the 5 6 hole. Just adding on. Trying to acquire some jug runs. Now it's Tanner Leggett who was in for a pinch runner. He scored that sixth run. RBI for DeBrule. Still first and second. Still two outs. And Nate Savino, one pitch. Allows the runner from second to score. You were wondering if they were going to use Hendon Sims that appears to be the answer as he's getting loose. <laughs> Kellum Clark. Brad Cumbus looks at another one down. Clark on deck with the big two run home run. What an about face in this game. I know we talked about it. When Mississippi State didn't have any hits in the sixth and the seventh. There's a lot of offense here. And a lot of offense all came alive. Six hits in the ball game, all in this inning, all six runs here in the eighth. Thing is, you can see it coming. A lot of hard contact, a lot of outs that were yep. line drive, center field, second base, left field, right field. What adjustment did they have to make? Just find a hole or hit it over the fence. They did that. Six run eighth inning. Cumbus popped out to left this inning. He's 0 for 3. 2 and 2. See Logan Tanner there at second base. He's moving around, getting trying to get a big lead, jumping around, not going anywhere. Way outside, three and two. Now he will. Feels a little bit more like Duty Noble right now.
Mariners will be going. Swing and a miss, and that'll do it. Cumbus strikes out, but wow, what an inning for the Dogs. Two home runs. Clark, Allen. It's 6-4. We head to the bottom of the eighth. With Kyle Peterson, Eduardo Perez, Carl Ravich up here in the booth, Chris Budden down on the field. Hale State, man, six big runs in the eighth inning. And we'll start with the defensive switches for Mississippi State. Braylon Skinner now gone into play left field. Leggett, who came in as a hitter, is now at shortstop. Hatcher will move to first base. And those are the three defensive changes. Stone Simmons is now pitching for Mississippi State. Seventh pitcher, and to Eduardo's point, what a job the bullpen did for Mississippi State after Christian McLeod had nothing. Give Johnson, Patrick, Stinnett. They just held the line all the way through. Now Stone Simmons started his career, collegiate career at Furman. And he was a weekend guy at Furman. Furman cancels the baseball program. Simmons makes his way to Mississippi State. Now he's center stage in Omaha. So Virginia down two. We'll start it with Logan Michaels. Eight, nine, then top of the order. Six outs to play with. Just quickly, two and oh. Everything closer Landon Sims is out in the bullpen. First hitter here in the bottom of the eighth, 2 1 pitch. That's down. Three balls on the strike. <laughs> See Tanner behind the plate. He did not like that. He's like, okay, come on. Can't cross me up. Well, here's the thing, too. If he doesn't cross him up, he may get the strike because Logan Tanner can go steal strikes. <laughs> <laughs> You don't, you don't need to say anything there. Three and one right field dropping quickly but a nice running catch Tanner Allen and why not. The big three run shot now a nice running catch in right field. Well we say he's done it all. Talked about his hitting check three run homer talk about his defense. He's got range both in laterally and back. This is the SEC player of the year and right now tonight he's flexing his muscle and showing his legs. Chris Newell's had a good night he's two for three with a double and a single. That's inside oh. just imagine the emotions for Jordan and for Allen to be part of a comeback know, try to go to two and oh, move to a game on Friday and move within one game of a World Series finals needing oh. now. Five more outs. A joke like they've been here so often they're a little bit bored with the streets the city like they've seen it all but they haven't seen a game like this. I hope to see the College World Series finals. Maybe a World Series title. Two and one to Newell. Popped up left field and Skinner is going to have to keep going back. It's carrying. Oh, he jumped and it is over the wall. That's a home run for Chris Newell. And the wind is blowing right to left and it got caught up in it. Newell's fourth and it's a one run game. Third hit of the game already has a single double on this one right here. Wind is blowing right to left right now. See Skinner giving his best shot. This is a great view right here.
just ran out of room. I don't think even with a good vertical jump he was going to get it. He ended up jumping almost horizontally because he ran so far. But just like that Virginia within a run. What a night for Newell a single a double and a homer and it is six to five and now it's Zach Geloff who's reached base all four times. That last base hit by Scotty DeBrule big given that extra run. Now you got the top of the order. Geloff has really battled his at bats. He's got nine homers this year, and this ball is poked to center. Rowdy Jordan went back now. And there are two outs Tanner Allen and Rowdy Jordan both make plays in the outfield. Well, you knew there was going to be a conversation between. Lamotis and Sims as to his availability. Given the great pitching that he's had, how inclined are you to say, I got to go get the guy, I got to get him? I think the thought after what Sims gave you, gave you the other night, the, the thought is we got him for three outs. So he's got to get a, figure out a way to get to the ninth. They got the lead in the ninth, Sims will be in, in this game. Cartier gets on, he's facing that man on deck. I got him in for I got him in for Teal. That's their best hitter. That's been yeah, their offense. Here's the thing, though. I mean, you've got Houston Hardy down there, the left hander, ready to go too. And I just it feels like if Sims if Sims comes in this game, he's coming in to get four outs. We'll find we're out about, right now. We're about to find out. All right, the top of the order has been terrific. Cartier, two hits, two sacrifices. He's aboard, and what a moment in this game. The best hitter for Mississippi State blasted a three run shot. The best hitter for Virginia, Kyle Teal, who had a huge grand slam this postseason, now steps up. And decision time for I think that guy. I think they're He's having the same, the same conversation we were having yeah. up here. That, that discussion was not do we get him or don't we get him? Who the discussion was do yeah. I raise my right arm or do I raise my left arm when I go out there? And it's the right one. You're going Eddie with wins. your best pitcher. You're going with your best pitcher. One nothing Perez. Landon right. Sims 4 and 0. Oh, 11 will. saves. He's got to get four outs. And what a showdown coming up with Kyle Teal when we come back. Welcome back everyone and here he is Kyle Teal and this was Super Regional Game 3. Try to keep that helmet on. It was a grand slam against Dallas Baptist. They were pushed to the brink and Teal delivered the uh, biggest hit of his career and now he comes up in an enormous spot. Against one of the best closers in all of college baseball Landon Sims. Sims a great story when Mississippi State was here in 2019 and he had committed to go pitch for them his folks said you want to go to Omaha to watch them and he said ah, let's save the money I, I have a feeling we're going to get back there at least once if not a couple of times so they didn't make the trip and this year he's on the dime of Mississippi State and has been a huge factor. He's been one of the best closers in the country. I mean, save for Kevin Copps yep. down in Fayetteville, this cat has been uh, as good as anybody, and it is straightforward. It's a mid 90s fastball at the top of the zone and a slide. Boy, how about how far Newell's ball carried on that yeah. fly to right? It kept going, and you kept watching Skinner sprinting towards that wall, and it just carried by a few feet but that was a high fly earlier tonight. He had three great at bats tonight. He has at the bottom of that lineup and Skinner went as far as you can run in left field and not make a play. If, if he's playing five steps closer to the wall he's got a chance to rob that because I mean his his route was dead on. Yeah. So here is Teal. O'Connor says I love everything about the guy we've told you about his heroics on the football field as a quarterback with the flu. He's not going to be cheated on his swings.
And this one to right, and Allen, that's quick. Look at Sims, look at Allen, look over at his buddy, Rowdy Jordan. Teal denied tonight, but Virginia gets one back. 6-5 to the ninth we go. What an entertaining game tonight. Mississippi State leading Virginia 6-5. They hadn't had a hit entering the eighth inning. And then two blasts, two run, home run from Kellen Clark. Enter Allen, a three run home run. And it was the great pitching of Griff McGarry. Seven and a third. The only hit he gave up was the Clark two run shot. He comes out of the game. The nine one hitters for Virginia have been outstanding tonight. Newell with three hits, including a homer. The park has given up three tonight. We go to the ninth in a one run ball game. And Nate Savino, the lefty, stays on. He'll get Clark to lead things off. A little check swing pulled foul for strike one. Clark, Forsyth, and then right back to Jordan at the top. This is a guy that changed the ball game right here. Freshman comes up. First fastball, he sees two run home run to right, and then the offense just kept on coming for State. It's only the fourth home run of the year for Clark. Last inning, the only inning that Mississippi State has been able to get the leadoff hitter on. And Virginia paid for that. Tighter here late in the game on the strike zone. Knee high right there. Is this the next great Clark? That's a hitter for Mississippi State. He had a chance to be drafted, turned it down, said, I'm going to play for the dogs. And we saw a very gifted natural swing on that home run. Lead off walk, which you're trying to avoid here if you're Virginia. Again, Forsyth and then Jordan and Allen in the hole. And overstate how massive a victory this is for either team. To go 2 0, get some time off before you come back Friday. We'll see if we're squaring a bunt. We are, and that's pulled way outside. Josh Hatcher, who came on for Forsyth last inning. He delivered a single after the home run from Clark. They kept going. Forsyth had a single. Jordan that double. When he was heading to third, he realized Hatcher's still standing there. And then Allen, the three run blast. Out. Wow, that was close to him, and he ended up popping it up. If the bat didn't get in the way of that, thankfully it did. It may have got him. Yeah, this is protect yourself right here. Protect the fingers, the face. Been there in that situation. It does not feel good at all. That's why I always wanted to throw it up and in. Guy squares the bunt. It was all, and, and not throw it at the guy, but throw the fastball up and in because a lot of times you get that. It's it's defense mode, understandably. And the ball goes straight up in the air. So now you got Rowdy Jordan and then Tanner Allen with one down here in the ninth, and that will prompt a quick meeting with Drew Dickinson on the mound. 
And part of Dickinson's philosophy is to throw the fastball more often. In fact, this has become a fastball heavy staff, and he has convinced them you got to pitch hard and you got to pitch in. Helps when you got guys with real good fastballs, too. Yeah. They have had those. Well, the careers of Rowdy Jordan and Tanner Allen amongst the Greats when it comes to Mississippi State, and they've had a billion of them. But think about Logan Tanner behind the play. You think about the sweet swing of Kellum Clark. Just keep turning them over. And in Starkville, and here is Jordan again. One more will. Tie him with Jake Mangum and Rusty Toms. On it, on it, on it. Third, Geloff to second. Wow. High throw and unable to keep the bag. That was a heck of an effort by Cotier A to catch it and then still make a throw. But they only get one. Yeah, the feed by Geloff not good at all right there. And Cotier, watch the athleticism right here. He's coming across. Has to change gears a little bit and direction. I don't think they would have had him anyway if it would have been a throw to the chest, but he was out at second base clearly on that one. Yeah, there's no question that he has the glove, ball, and foot yeah, all there. at the same that's time, that. but we're going to take some time to look at that. That's what I'm saying. All right, we go back to it. I mean, put the headset on, say, He's out at second. He's safe at first. Let's go back to work. You got a better idea. Take a look upstairs. We'll tell you. We'll tell you. <laughs> go back. But to your point, this is where you can take this to the next step and just say, hey, I got a microphone and he's got an earpiece. We don't need to do no, that. That was quick. Yeah. Yep. It was quick. But yeah, I mean, it, it's less people are going to complain about replay. If there's pace to it, it's just that simple. If, if you don't think that it interrupts the, the pace of the game, then people aren't going to have as much of an issue with replay. And I think it's the biggest thing that we got to work on. I like that we have it, believe me. Of course. Just we got to pick up, we got to pick up pace a little bit. Tanner Allen with that massive home run after being 0 for 3. Griff McGarry had done a great job against Allen. In fact, Rowdy Jordan was 0 for 2 and was hit by a pitch. Allen. Was 0 for 3. Look out! He drilled him right in the shoulder back area. And the former football player is going to just take the pads off, and you'll see he will run down to first base. It's a one run game in the ninth inning with two outs. He ain't throwing at him. I can promise you that. Two seat fastball got away, and this hurts. Don't get me wrong. He ain't throwing at him. That's going to leave a mark for a while. It's trying to overthrow it right there, knowing exactly who you're facing. Yeah. I think he's done. Yeah, Brian O'Connor has seen enough from Savino, so he's going to come on out. Another pitching change for Virginia. He's already signaled for the right hander. So two on Mississippi State and give Tanner Allen a chance to visit with a trainer, perhaps, because that is still stinging badly. We'll take a timeout here. Uh, Witten coming in, two down in the ninth in a one run game. 11 runs, 18 hits, no errors, and. <laughs> still hurts. Oh, of course it yes. does. <laughs> See him go, ah. I'm trying to make him laugh. I get it, but it still does hurt. You know what he needs? 
Cold spray. No, he needs a W. Cold spray. Cold spray. Oh, cold, cold spray, spray yes. from Korea. Yes. Yes. I thought that's what they were going to yes. go do during that timeout. That's right. Get our buddy Daniel Kim, KBO superstar correspondent. That solves every over. problem. It seems it? to. Yeah. I bought some. We were in Hoover. Sprayed Dave Neal with it in the middle of the game. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Went to Walgreens and got it. Did he freeze up on you? He was he was a little spooked, I'll tell you. That. <laughs> I might need some on my back here after yeah. We... yeah, I got you earlier today. Yeah, you did. Well, it's now Kyle Witten to deal with Cameron James. Jordan's at second, Allen's at first. They're one out away from going to the bottom of the ninth, down a run. Landon Sims already in the game. First pitch, ball one. James looking for his first hit of the night and a little insurance. Two oh. balls and a strike. Okay, that's a lot of respect for James. Outfield, especially Teal, continues to play deep. I understand against left handed hitters, but with a right handed hitter at the plate, wind is definitely not blowing out to right right now. 26th appearance for the big righty Witten, 323. Come ERA, 18 first walks, 37 strikeouts. First one, warning. A lot of pop in this bat of James, 11 home runs, 58 RBIs. That one was up in the zone, and he swung and fouled the straight back. Virginia will have four, five, and six in the ninth. And two strikes. Foul off. behind the plate keep the pace here he will point out to Kyle Whitten to get it going already Jordan's over at third Tanner Allen the second and Tanner Allen is at first oh, will not chase and they're loaded now as the runners move up season the outfield moves in for Leggett with one homer nine RBIs and what I mean 
in there in big time. First pitch gets the call on the outside corner strike one. Well, this could be a game changing at bat here if Leggett can somehow find a way to get a hit and bring in a couple of insurance runs, especially with Landon Sims on the mound for Mississippi State. In the dirt, great block. That was not getting by Logan Michaels. Sims hidden underneath that towel in the background. Loser will play Thursday. The winner, NC State, on Friday. Winner of that game moves into the College World Series finals. There's the great starter tonight, Griff McGarry. And a 1 2. Spoiled by Leggett. Huge comeback if you're just tuning in. It was 5 to nothing. I should say it was four to nothing and Mississippi State scored six runs on two home runs in the eighth inning. They hadn't gotten a hit until the eighth inning. They got a two run and a three run home run. Virginia got one in the bottom of the eighth. It's six five bases loaded. And Leggett who didn't start this game but. Came in in the eighth. Behind one and two. On the ground fielded and the force out is right there at third. Geloff makes it. It'll be up to Sims and four five and six for Virginia in the bottom of the ninth. Landon Sims first pitch to Devin Ortiz. Ball one. On the ground in the hole, fielded though by James, who cut in front of the shortstop. Leggett was sliding around in shallow left, and James able to bend down, pick it up, and get a big first out. One hop playing away from the base right here. Well played. Knows exactly who's running. Devin Ortiz not too fast down the line. Sets his feet, squares up, throws a strike over to Hatcher. Can't swing and a miss. We have used 13 pitchers in this game, which matches the single game record of the College World Series. That's oh. down. Mississippi State's got a real chance to be the ninth team to use eight pitchers in a College World Series. And be the first team to use that many pitchers and win a game. Bullpen has been a massive story for that guy right there tonight. One ball, two strikes. Sims to Kent. Oh. This was part of the discussion earlier in our meeting with. Chris Limonis and the pitcher coach Scott Foxhall whether Sims would be available tonight. They are not surprised he is but they did have a conversation with him and another spoil. Tell you what what helped a lot also when he came in to face Kyle Teal was one pitch yep. one out. Yep. And got a quick first out here in this inning too. With Ortiz. 
2-2. This one is shallow left field. Skinner is at the line, and he will get there and make the play. <laughs> <laughs> the last time a ball was hit in his direction, it kept flying the other way. The wind is turned again, now blowing in from center field. So that ball took a different route, and so did he. <laughs> Happy feet. Absolutely. Chance for Virginia Alex Tappan. Six homers on the year, a 244 average coming into the game. Same location. Stay up there. If he chases, you follow up. He's feeling a little better after getting drilled. And it was just off. Just off. Elevate. We're going back with the slider. College World Series, one game tomorrow, one game Thursday. One and two, he stays alive, and that's a hittable pitch. We got it, Eddie. We're thinking the same thing. I'm thinking you have elevate to elevate. the fastball again. Elevate the fastball. He got two swings and misses to start this at bat. He, he got lucky with that slider now, because that that was one that could have been six six real quick. If he doesn't swing, it sets up the slider. But you have to be able to go up there. There Get it is. Out, and that's it. What a weapon Landon Sims. What a comeback for Hale State. They get six runs and win 6 5, and now enjoy a few days off. They showed some character tonight. The bullpen came up big. That man right there dominated early. But it was the resilience of the Mississippi State Bulldogs. That Preston was an Johnson, number. Chase Patrick, Parker Stinnett, Cam Tuller, Stone Simmons. And that guy. Gabe Smith and this guy, Landon Sims. What an effort. What a job by Lamonis. No panic in that dugout after being down four zip. Three run bomb from Tanner Allen. Two home runs in the eighth inning. A two run shot. Kellum Clark. And then a three run home run for Tanner Allen. What a feeling it must be for him. He is our Capital One player of the game, and he's with Chris. Well, Tanner, we talked about the no panic that this team has. You go hitless through seven innings, and the floodgates finally open. How'd you guys do it? We just believe in each other. It's a, it's a hard game, man. This game will bring it to your knees so fast, but we just stick with it and keep playing and good things happen. They bring in Steven Shock. What were you looking for off that guy? Well, I knew they had a base open, and uh, I knew he wouldn't get throw me a fastball. Let's just put it like that. So I kind of just sat on the slider and thank the Lord he hung one. He was able to put a good swing on it. You and your best friend Rowdy have been here two other times you're now 2-0 and in this series what has it felt like this go around you know this win right here is really big you know we're middle of the game we're like man you know this is going to be a punch if we take a L right here but you know then we were meeting the outfit when the pitching changed hey we're not out of this game we always come back we're used to this so let's just keep playing and keep playing and uh, how about the big swing with Rowdy right there in the gap so he got us started what can you say about the way that your closer Landon Sims that guy gets everything he's got every time he goes in the mound. 
I'm looking. It's like the seventh or eighth inning before we come in. I keep looking back in the pen. I'm like, where's Landon at? He's got to be getting hot somewhere. So, uh, yeah, man, it's, that guy's unbelievable. He's an unbelievable competitor. How's his shoulder? Woo, it's a sore. <laughs> but, hey, get a couple of days to uh, rest it now. So, be all right. Go get some ice. I appreciate Thank it. You. Yeah. Thank you. Congrats. Hell State. About it, Tanner Allen quickly to give credit to his buddy Rowdy Jordan and Landon Sims. What a teammate. What a night. What a comeback for Mississippi State. It's been fun now. Been We've had some good ones at night. The boys at the top of the order in the SEC Player of the Year right in the middle of it. No it's going to be loud. It. It's going to be loud in their hotel tonight. Their hotel's our hotel. That's true. It's going to be loud in your hotel it's tonight. Be loud in our hotel. For Chris Button, Kyle Peterson, Eduardo Perez, our entire crew, Johnson, Gustafson, the Scots, I'm Carl Ravage. Great night here in Omaha and many more to come.